All right, so here is my Kenwood TS590SG, and today I'm going to be performing the SO3 oscillator installation and upgrade for the new and more stable oscillator. Uh, as you can see, I have the Kenwood radio turned upside down, and I also have an anti static wrist strap. And I'm in static season here, so everything I touch is zapping. So you definitely want to use static precautions with this because. Uh, with the surface mount technology, you will do some damage if you discharge through the board. All right, so here is my SO3 oscillator. And the SO3 oscillator is going to be placed right over here. I'm going to pull that out. Right, you see the little square right there with that plug? I'm going to pull that out. Uh, also, if you notice, there's two jumpers here. Those got to come out of the circuit. Uh, so what I do is I'll lift one leg up and just leave them on, on the other leg. So uh, they're there, but they're not connected. They're not jumpering the two pins. Uh, also in front here is the adjustment. If you were to do the adjustment with the VVW uh, be before or without the uh, SO3 oscillator. So this is the adjustment here for uh, the regular unit without the oscillator uh, if you need to uh, change it or adjust it because it's uh, slightly off. We're going to be using the adjustment that's on the oscillator, which is going to be right there. And they give you a little tool for that, which is this little tool here that comes with the oscillator. This is the Kenwood oscillator. This is not the, the cheap uh, Chinese knockoff. Uh, depending on who you talk to, the cheap Chinese knockoff does work or does not work. So I decided to go with the uh, actual Kenwood oscillator. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this board out here and solder the oscillator on, and we'll continue the video from there. All right, so the oscillator, as you can see, has been installed. Uh, you might want to use a temperature-controlled iron like I have. I use a Heiko iron, uh, 25 watt uncontrolled weller. Probably won't do it because you have to solder the case to the board via two pins and it's uh, you got to get it fairly hot. Not hot enough to burn the traces. So at this point we are going to turn the radio on and it's going to sit here for between a half hour and an hour to stabilize. I have it already set for the uh, 10 megahertz VVW tone frequency for the uh, for the clock and we're just gonna let it go uh, for about a half hour to an hour and then I'll come back and I will perform the uh, frequency calibration uh, which you will need either a Morse code keyer or a shorting switch a momentary shorting switch to uh, perform the calibration which I will show you in the next part of the video all right, the next part of the uh, installation is calibrating the uh, frequency to the WWV uh, 800 hertz tone that's transmitted at 10 megahertz. As you can see, you can hear the tone. Uh, my apologies if I called it VVW instead of WWV. I get, always get, get that confused, but it is WWV. You will need a uh, key of some sort, either a Morse code key, a straight key rather, not a paddle, a straight key, uh, or some kind of Jimmy Rig switch. This is a momentary switch I got from Radio Shack, so it's only on when it's depressed and off when uh, you let go. And the other end of the switch is a 1 8 or 3.5 millimeter plug, mono plug. Basically when you push the switch, it shorts the plug and you'll hear the side tone. Uh, make sure you go to menu selection 40 and it should be 800 hertz for the CW side tone um, uh, I don't do C CW so that is the default that is uh, that is what was there but if if not you got to change it to 800 uh, one other thing uh, you might ask uh, will you, I be transmitting in this frequency no I will not I'm out of band so when you key down, 
uh, you will not have any power out, but you will hear the 800, turn, 800 hertz CW tone. Uh, if you performed the Mars mod, then you got an issue because now you're going to be transmitting on this frequency, which is first of all illegal, and second of all, you likely don't have an antenna that's resonant at 10 megahertz exactly. So, uh, you know, that could be a problem for you. But I have no Mars mod. Uh, this is really the first time I'm really opening the radio up to install the uh, oscillator. So I'm going to plug it in in the next part of the video. The idea is to get the two tones, the key down CW tone to the uh, WWV tone and get them to match as one tone. If they're different, then they're not in sync and the frequency slightly off. You will adjust uh, the oscillator with this tool that came. Uh, to get that tone to hear one tone and we'll do that next part of the video okay. so this is before any adjustment you'll hear the 800 hertz tone from the WWV but as soon as I press this you'll hear that the tone is different and that's what we're gonna do uh, we're going to match those tones so it sounds like one tone. I'm not going to be able to do this while filming because I'm going to have to have both hands, uh, one on the switch and one on the uh, adjustment tool. So what I'll do is once once I'm good, I will film the end result. But again, this is the before tone, before the adjustment. So I completed the adjustment. And as you can see, when I press the button, there's virtually no tone change. That's as close as I could get it. It's a, uh, a fine adjust when you're using a tool. So if you go too far, you'll hear it go too far. If you go too far the other way, you'll also hear it go too far the other way. And this is about as good as I can get it. So we'll check it out on a, uh, on a QSO uh, in a short amount of time and uh, we'll go from there but as you can see I'm pressing and the tone pretty much stays the same okay so I'm here at uh, 7153.00 now before I edit that VFO I would probably have to hear this guy in this good audio at 7153.1 so I seem to be a hundred Hertz off everywhere it's not that big a deal, but, you know, what the heck. I put it in there, and I wanted to get it even. All right, we'll try another frequency in a second on another conversation. Uh, and the only reason I really noticed that it was off to begin with was because every conversation that I locked in on, uh, it was always, I was always locking in at point 0.1. So my first conversation here is point zero zero. Okay, here's another QSO. This one's at 7176. Just to test, uh, I went uh, I went 100 hertz, that's 0.1, on the dial, up and down, and both sounded off. But when I went to 00, uh, their voices sounded spot on. So I think this was uh, done well, pretty simple, uh, including warm-up time. You're probably talking about, you know, an hour, an hour and 15 minutes if you're talking about an hour warm-up time taking the covers off, uh, you know, soldering the thing, and adjusting it. doesn't take much at all. That's about it. Uh, I want to thank the uh, Groups I.O. for the uh, uh, for the Kenwood uh, 590S page. Uh, great bunch of guys. If you own one of these, I suggest going there. They were very helpful in having me understand the, uh, uh, the procedure. Uh, I wasn't too familiar with beat tones and, and how to cancel them out and all. They explained it to me in step-by-step -step procedure. And again, that's the Groups IO Kenwood 590S page. Great bunch of people, and I give them all the credit in the world for helping me on this. Thank you.